welcome to our Harmonious Podcast Series. My name is Michael Francis Lott, and I am here with author Peter Wells, who is the author of the book Notes from the West Pole. And today we're going to be diving into his piece called A New Story. Our civilization is in the process of a great change. We're going through a change in the mythic story of the culture, from one understanding of our condition to another. A new story is arriving. The old story is that we are in a dualistic world, divided between good and evil and friends and enemies. We've been taught and conditioned by a belief system that insists on conflict as fundamental to the human condition. Also, we've inherited a way of life that is predicated on the dominance of a ruling authority that is armed and ready for battle. The old story is of wars and massacres, of human self-destruction as a fact of life, and it continues to this day. But now, a new story is emerging that reflects changes in our condition. As the old story has divided humanity, the new story is concerned with the wholeness of our condition and a more harmonious and inclusive worldview. Many will say change is impossible, that human conflict is inevitable. We've been raised on a history of war and conquest and heroism in battle. This is the way we are. No doubt this is the way we have been and continue to be. However, we are evolving. And the increased awareness of our actual condition of being one human species in one earthly environment creates a fresh perspective of what we're doing here. The new story is about a worldview we can all live with. Can we awaken to a fresh vision of the ancient truth we've always known? Each of us and each living thing is in direct contact with the universal source of life. Call it Allah or Yahweh or God. This direct connection within us is sacred and beyond the reach of divisive ideologies or any authority whatsoever. Can we accept this sacred quality in each other? Can we accept this inner freedom, this personal sovereignty, and at the same time recognize that our world has changed since those ancient texts were written? We are no longer isolated tribes in an uncharted world. We are one human family in one earthly environment. Our condition and our awareness is now global. The old story doesn't work for humanity as a whole, nor is it concerned with the whole planet. It wasn't created with the whole planet in mind. We've inherited divisive systems and customs that were designed for another time that are now no longer appropriate or beneficial. Can we awaken to a fresh vision, a new story, including all the tribes, all the nations and all the religions and recognize that we need a more harmonious way of life on this planet? Can we disentangle ourselves from the obsolete divisions that are causing intolerable human suffering and unchain ourselves from the perpetual unforgiving vengeance? Can we honor the sacred source within each one of us? Yes, we can one person at a time. So thank you, Peter, for that lovely piece. I want to play devil's advocate here for a minute. One of the things that uh, I'm kind of is coming to me with this piece is that you're saying that human beings aren't essentially um, basically aggressive or they're not warriors towards one another uh, inherently. Like we're not inherently meant to kill each other. But, you know, if you look at human history, that's all we've done. 
like throughout the entire history of this planet. So why would you say that human beings aren't uh, naturally warriors? You know? Well, of course we're naturally warriors because that's the path that we've come on. But there was a time before we were warriors that we didn't have wars. There were times when we lived in our small space and work things out, it, obviously we could die many ways from disease, from wild animals, and from each other. But what we're in the process of now is we're discovering our wholeness, our whole global presence on the planet. And whereas it's been necessary and um, in order to survive that we fight wars, mm -hmm. it no longer is. It's no longer necessary. The thinking that went, or the feeling that went with the war, or of, of conflict between people, is no longer absolutely imperative in our lives. We're making agreements, we're traveling around the world, we're trading, we're making things work. And the ancient divisions and the structure of opposition that we've inherited is no longer appropriate. Mm -hmm. So, in our own mind, in our own understanding, I think we have to head towards this wholeness of our condition, individually and collectively. The, our benefit, the, the marvelous benefits that we've had by dividing and making things uh, conflicted uh, is now no longer appropriate. We don't even like it. We don't like our governments fighting each other. We don't like wars around the world. We don't like the suffering that everybody is undergoing. You know, there's more to life than uh, being in, in a conflict. The fact we have to understand and accept our path here. We've mm -hmm. come through that and it's still existing around the world. But now there is a new story. And the new story is we're all here together and we can, if we really work at it, we can make things work so that we all benefit. There's not a reason for us to have the amount of weapons that we now have, the weapons that can destroy our whole existence. It's not necessary. It's not part of our, who we are. It's, we've accumulated these weapons, but they're not actually um, what we're working towards. Mm -hmm. We're working towards, I think all around the world, we're working towards a more peaceful resolution of our relationships. Okay, so we have different struggles going on all around the world. But if the understanding is that we can resolve this, uh, take, for example, uh, the biggest problem we seem to have, which is uh, terrorism. Mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> terrorism is a real grievance. People are very, very sick and un unhappy about what's been happening to them, and they respond by being uh, oppositional, they be, by in conflict. They use conflict as a means of expressing it. Well, it no longer needs to happen. If we can find, if we can see a way to, I mean, the two things that go with the uh, terrorism thing, one is these people are being dominated. We're sending drones, we're doing, we've got outposts of American and British and European influence all over the place that dominate the people in, in different areas. Mm -hmm. We have to end that. That has to end. I believe that when that ends, then terrorism will end. And we can talk our way to that. I think it needs people like us, like you, to actually present um, an attitude and a way of life that can work harmoniously. And the, the old ways of uh, trying to dominate the situation, trying to use force, mm -hmm. is not going to work. The way is going to, it's our understanding that makes the difference our understanding that we can live in a, in a way that works for us and for others, for our people. Now, I totally understand. I mean, there's almost no example. There are problems all around the world where uh, armies are engaged or waiting to be engaged. Um, I believe the change is in the consciousness, and when we realize we don't have to do that, that we can get through this without harming others. Mm -hmm. The idea that we've got millions and millions of dollars in men aimed at uh, killing people 
that we don't know is absurd. It's, it's a false teaching, and we need to be free from that as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. How do we do that? How do we change a, uh, a military force that has weapons that destroys us from remotely? You know, Well, it's still the consciousness. We have to align our being with a consciousness that works to preserve life. Mm-hmm. not a consciousness that works to kill and maim even people we don't even know. Right. So I believe it's got to happen. And, it, and the only way it's going to happen is by creating art and probably institutions in some way. When an institution is working on the basis of representing everyone like a true democracy mm-hmm. and that everybody is participating in this and has the um, uh, the desire to work things out. Right. I really uh, appreciate this topic of terrorism here. And I think to really heal terrorism, which is just sort of a one example of this universal idea of, you know, being divided, um, I think what we really have to do is we have to address the emotional reality of the terrorist, yeah, absolutely. you know, so absolutely. The, the terrorist, you know, they have probably grown up with having somebody go and kill their children, kill their parents. And now they're, they've, all they've seen is this opponent that's come and completely killed their families and their loved ones. The people that were closest to them, the people that raised them, that was their blood, you know, and that's all they've known. And so they're, they they have this immense rage of, you know, I, I want to avenge these people that killed my family. And in their perspective, that's the, their highest honor. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, it's, it's one thing to understand we're all one and we're all, you know, doing this. But but could you imagine if somebody came and, and killed your family, you know, like the rage that you would be filled with, Absolutely. you know, that would be, so I think in order to really uh, heal terrorism from the inside out, that's the first thing we need to address is the emotional reality of the terrorist. Yes. And at the same time, we have to recognize the cause of the violence that we commit. The idea that the United States has weapons all around the world to dominate and force people against their will, and we have nothing to do with them other than this idea that we can force, so that in, when they attack something, we use force to, to really place our judgment on the matter. We, we're saying f- more force, more force is going to solve it. But it isn't. It's the force that is causing the terrorism, as you point out. So we have to take our foot off of the pedal and actually um, realize that the people in this world deserve, deserve to live and that governments killing people is our biggest problem. Hmm. It's our, I think it's our biggest single problem that uh, the governments are running kind of unchecked and have no interest in harmony, have only interest in domination, mm-hmm. and want their enemies or their uh, conflicts to be resolved by force. Yeah. So th- that's that's what I see. I see the force. I see the card that needs to be played is in Western hands, American, etc., and that that needs to be. We need an inspired leader who can point out that this is the way. Mm-hmm. And that needs to circulate all around the world. It needs to circulate with music, and it needs to circulate that, that get rid of this, and we'll have a golden age. Mm-hmm. If we can get rid of this, this is an enormous cancer that is actually you know, running through us. And it's, it's from the, the mind and from the belief system and its obedience to false authorities mm-hmm. that causes it. So we have to wake up from that. And yeah. it's a, it, that's why that piece, you know, it's one person at a time. I don't think you can ma- wave a wand and have millions of people become, um, you know, peaceful. 
Right. As you say, their suffering is still cooking within them. Yeah, and the the rage, the anger that they feel, it's right. I mean it's totally valid. Yep. You know? I mean of course if someone goes and, and murders your child, of course you're gonna feel rage and anger, you know? Yep. And you're gonna want to do anything you can to to avenge that that child. But the question here is like, okay, given that that is the emotional reality of that person or of that culture, you know, how do we heal that? And, um, you know, this whole topic, it, it brings me back to something that happened last year, actually, when I was doing advertising for the Harmonious on Purpose Festival, which was this festival that was basically promoting uh, peace, promoting world peace. And I was going around and I was handing out these flyers to people and I handed out this flyer to this one guy and he looks at it and he's like, oh, Harmonious on Purpose, you know, what's this about? And I was like, well, it's this festival that's trying to inspire, you know, world peace and living harmoniously in a divided culture. And this guy just gets so offended. And he's like, you know what? Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. And he was like, you know, I was there when Martin Luther King gave his speech and I was rallying, you know, these world meditation days back in the seventies. And I was the person on the forefront for that. And you know what? Here I am, you know, decades later, and it's all still the same. And he was going on about Islam. And he was saying, you know, in the Islamic uh, belief system, they believe that if you are not the same religion as them, if you do not hold the same belief system, then you must be eradicated from the planet and you are an infidel. And he was saying that there is absolutely no way to deal with that kind of uh, disease other than eradicating them off of the planet. And of course, I, you know, didn't agree to that, but I also was sort of at a loss for how to how to even respond for that in the moment. It really sort of got my gears turning about all, all these things that we're talking about. So in, in your opinion, uh, yeah, how, how do we deal with that belief system? Well, we've got to create the environment we want. Mm-hmm. And we've got to heal the ideas that put us against each other. We've got to make the divided thing in our own consciousness whole. And if we can do that, and if we can make these ideas popular... Because it's only, it's the best thing for everyone, including the warriors. You know, even those like this guy, he still believes in it. Even though the guy you're talking about, he's sort of um, disappointed and not, doesn't believe it can happen, but he's still there. He still wants a peaceful world. I think we all want it. And we don't believe that it's actually practical to want it, but we all want it. Yeah. And and one of the things, too, I've noticed in my own journey is that, you know, when you really come across truth, like truth that really speaks to the depths of your soul, it tends to really penetrate those layers of conditioning and those layers of judgment and those layers of our old belief systems, you know, which has been part of the process of my own unraveling. And so uh, one of the ways I think we can do this, if we just continually promote uh, truth you know, something that resonates at the very core of our being, then if it resonates with us, then on some level, even if it might be a subconscious or unconscious level, it's going to resonate with those people also. And um, you were there for One World Bearing Witness. Uh, David Nicole was one of the presenters. And one of the things that he spoke about was this concept of subtle activism, which is where uh, we can really impact the the collective psyche through practices of meditation and prayer and really get groups together. I mean, talking like millions of people at one time to meditate and to uh, send healing energy around the planet. And so I think that's also one viable way to do this as well. And there's, you know, certainly wouldn't hurt. Yeah. And there's actually been studies too, that have shown that, you know, when you have groups, large groups of people, uh, meditating on specific days or specific weeks that, uh, you know, in certain urban areas, the crime dramatically decreases at that time when people are doing that. So there is a correlation there that has been studied. So Well, I think we've entered um, for some time now a new age. And this age includes all of us. Mm-hmm. And, and the previous ages have not included all of us. They've been different nations, different religions, still happening one side against the other. But I think now the concept of the fact that we're all here together and that we're set up in a way that puts us against each other has got to change. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we're far better off working with each other for our mutual benefit than right. against each other for our mutual suffering. Mm-hmm. We don't need to go that way. It's not necessary. Okay, the guys, you know, in Afghanistan or Iran or wherever, Middle East, they've suffered so much. They've lost their beautiful family and they're filled with anger. Well, they still, we still have to help them get better. Right. We don't want them to kill others because those others will feel the same way and will have the same suffering to expiate. So what we're dealing with is a, is a kind of teaching that says we can have this. We can have a more harmonious way of life than we've inherited. Mm-hmm. And it, it's absolutely necessary that we support that idea. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And um, one of the things I think that we could really benefit from as a collective is a further understanding of trauma and the way that trauma operates. Because, um, you know, these people in the Middle East, their whole perspective, their whole way of relating to each other is based off of this trauma, based off of this open wound. And until a trauma becomes resolved, it's going to be reenacted. Just as the boy that was abused by his father will more than likely grow up and abuse his son too unless he understands how to unravel that trauma in himself exactly i think that's another thing that's worth exploring here right so yeah well i think we're at a a turning point i think we've got the ability to deal with this on an individual level Mm -hmm. and once that gathers momentum and it comes out in the art comes out in the music comes out in every art form uh you know we're still in it but I believe there's a clear way out, and I believe it's through the consciousness of the individual person. And I think we can actually, that consciousness is the most powerful thing going on. Mm-hmm. And our submission to a way of life that is working against our interests and against the whole human family is not cool. So we need to be, you know, we need to move onward with the idea that this. This whole thing that we're a part of is a very beautiful thing, and we need to preserve it. And um, there's, it's waiting for us to do that. Mm-hmm. And it's in the art. It's in the music. It's in uh, collecting together f- to celebrate this. We have a golden age coming up, a golden age that will relieve us as we relieve ourselves of this self-punishing self-destroying kind of philosophy we're going to get very high yeah as that as we see the light that we can see that says yes this is possible it's possible in my life Mm -hmm. and it's actually happening in my life and it's it's if as it happens in the individual lives the whole thing begins to change and i i think we're in that place we're going into a fulfillment of a fresh understanding of what we're doing here. Yeah, I I believe so. And I think a big part of that is really, you know, getting a clear connection with our relationship with the divine, with God, with the universe, what is sacred. Um, because I believe that, you know, so many people, they've grown up with this, you know, punishing idea of, of God or of divinity. And if we could just come to an understanding that, our notion of the divine, you know, is it's unconditional love. It's radical acceptance of the self. You know, God understands your deepest wounds, your deepest pain, and it loves you in spite of, of any of that. And so if we can attune ourselves to that understanding of, of in, and really heal our relationship with the divine, then I think that's really the healing of the self. Well, the divine is the human soul. The divine is what is already existing that has built this being that we are, that is present in us, and that is belong here for eternity. Mm-hmm. And we're a part of that. We have a direct connection with that. So there's nothing to be denied. The whole thing, except the drones. We've got to deny the drones. <laughs> but, the, but there's nothing in us to be denied. There's nothing wrong with who we are. What we're dealing with, we're struggling with a social order, a civilization that has fostered war and conflict as a matter of course. So we have to disentangle ourselves, our consciousness from that, 
and practice. I'm not talking about being, um, you know, a total religious something or other. I'm talking about just the normal thing of waking up each morning and accepting who we are and doing our best work at whatever we love to do and fulfilling this being that we are. We can fulfill this being. If we can do that, we're cool. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Peter. This has been awesome. Yeah. So, all thank right. Thank you, Michael. Stay connected with us and get the book Notes from the West Pole on our website, www.harmonious.com. And that's spelled Harmony Us with a Y. Thanks for listening. <laughs>